There it is. There we go. And Chris, I will turn it over to you. Uh, Chris, you're muted. <laughs> I got for myself this spring a shirt that says you're muted on it, but I'm always the one <laughs> muted, so the joke is always on me. Um, so welcome, everybody. I'm the nuts and bolts gal, so I'll try not to take up too much space because I know you'll want to hear from Adina and Sarah, who are um, also truly experts on the GW experience. But my name is Chris Butler. I am the special assistant to the Dean of Admissions here at GW, and it's a, a honor to be here with you. Um, I began my, careers in, my career in student life, so I really love connecting with our current students and our prospective students um, and really have so much great news to share about GW. I'm also a mom of four, so I know I'm looking for the same kinds of community for my students that you all are looking for in your um, next step of your um, educational adventure. So hopefully we'll be able to flesh out a really rich picture of what GW can offer for you um, as, a, as a college community. So just a little bit of uh, overview in detail about GW. It was envisioned by George Washington and chartered by an act of Congress in 1821. So it's a little bit older of an institution than a lot of people recognize. Um, we call ourselves a comprehensive global research university. And really what that means is that there's something for everyone. We have historic strengths in international affairs, political science and public policy, but we also have a rising reputation internationally, really, um, in science and, and the STEM subjects. Um, so just a couple of quick facts about our institution. I'm going to switch slides here. So GW has 11,000 undergraduate students. So this means that your incoming class is going to be between 25 and 2,600 students. Um, if that feels a little bit daunting, we're going to talk a little bit more about living learning communities a little later on in my presentation. It's a really great way to make this um, college community feel a little bit smaller and more intimate. We, as a private institution, we have students from all 50 states and over 130 countries. Our average class size is about 29 students. Um, you'll find that varies a lot. So if you're in like a biology major as a first year student, your lectures are gonna be a little bit larger, but generally you'll find that by the time you're a junior and a senior, your class size is much more seminar style. The general faculty to student ratio is one to 13. So you, our students really do find a lot of opportunity to befriend um, their faculty members and really form those relationships that um, leverage their success on campus. So GW is in the heart of downtown DC. So we're located right where all the action happens. We're in the Foggy Bottom neighborhood, which is in the southwestern portion of, of DC. Um, off campus and down the street from our, you can see that five block by six block area of the Foggy Bottom neighborhood. You have the White House, you have the National Mall where you can find yourself at a moment's notice. Um, our students are interning at places like the World Bank, the International Monetary Fund, the Peace Corps, National Geographic Society, and the Washington Post. And all of these places are within walking distance. Um, that's not even mentioning the federal government, like Capitol Hill, where a lot of our students go to intern, the business firms, the public health agencies, the art galleries, um, all of the opportunities for students to learn more outside the classroom are just innumerable. The great thing about our location is that we leverage these relationships in a couple of ways. So we send our students to internships in these organizations, but we also invite faculty members, whether practicing in their field currently and coming to us as adjunct faculty or retiring from their field and coming to us as full professors, we really gain that, um, that experience of theirs as um, in our teaching faculty as well. So GW actually has two campuses. We have the Foggy Bottom one, which I just showed. It's um, and that's at the top of the slide here. Again, about five blocks by six blocks um, radius. So it's a very condensed campus. It takes maybe ten or fifteen minutes to cross our campus end to end on foot. Um, or five minutes from the National Mall. Um, and you'll find your academic buildings, your residence halls, your student support services, and your research um, facilities and your library all within sort of two or three blocks from where you're living. Um, our Mount Vernon campus is a campus that we acquired from a um, 
a small liberal arts college about 25 years ago. It is a completely integrated campus. So our students can live on one campus and take classes on the other. A lot of our students on one campus will go to um, club meetings or community events at the other campus. Both campuses are linked by a shuttle that runs 24 seven. So our Foggy Bottom campus has that sort of urban, gritty sort of fast moving feel and our Mount Vernon campus, which has our division one sports fields, our outdoor pool, it has its own dedicated dining hall and library and workout facilities. It feels a little bit more like a liberal arts college. It's a primarily first year residence campus. And again, a lot of our living learning communities are housed there, which we'll talk about a little bit later in um, my presentation time. The academic flavor of this Mount Vernon campus in general is very sort of seminar style. The learning spaces are smaller. Our visiting scholars sometimes come to do lectures and we also have things like fountain days or harvest days. So there's lots of outdoor programming space there too. So you're not really losing anything um, to our urban campus because we do have these um, beautiful community building outdoor spaces as well. So talking a little bit about our dining model, our dining model is really unique for an urban, um, an urban research university. Um, by request of our students about seven years ago, I think, um, they wanted a model of dining that really served their busy schedule, their need to curate a very specific dining experience. So instead of having dedicated dining halls, currently what we do is we have dining partnerships with grocery stores, with food trucks, with sit down restaurants, with fast casual places. Um, we have over a hundred dining partners. So students have dining dollars on their ID card and it operates as a declining balance debit card. So they can, um, they can eat at one of these many places during class, I mean, after class during their busy day, or they can swipe at a grocery store and shop for the week and cook for themselves in their dining hall. So this works for students, obviously, who keep kosher, for students who are vegetarian, for students who are vegan, but also students who are just super busy. Um, our students do find that they are able to eat in community with their other fellow students. So um, there's plenty of, of dining spaces in our um, residence halls too. Like for example, District House, which is one of our major upper class residence halls has a food court down below as well as lots of dedicated community space. So our students do find that there are places to gather um, and also enjoy a meal together. So in terms of student life, we really embrace you as a GW student from the moment you commit to coming to us. Um, our orientation begins that summer um, before your first year student and orientation leaders are going to reach out to you to um, introduce you to that group of small uh, of other first year students who will really help curate that first social experience that you have. We'll also be um, assigning you advisors who will help prepare you for the registration process, which happens in late August. Um, our orientation program features lots of things. I'm sure Adina will talk a little bit about the special Hillel um, pre-orientation program, but um, we also have programs like our welcome day of service where students gather in small groups and um, with other faculty members and staff members will go out and do service projects in the community. So it's another great way to get to know some of your other first year classmates in small groups and also meet a faculty member that you might not otherwise meet in a classroom. We also have a program called District Connections, which is a series of about 120 field trips that students can sign up for. Again, they're small group opportunities where you will meet other students with similar interests and we'll take you on sports outings to free Kennedy Center shows or I took a small group of students to plant trees in an urban park and we had a wonderful time. We took um, walking tours of different neighborhoods and learned the history of DC. So we really wanna make sure that our first year students feel like Washingtonians um, when they finally complete that first year. We also have, um, we hold an organization fair about two weeks into school. We have over 400, really almost 500 student organizations now, and plenty of ways for you to find other students with shared lived experience, whether that's faith communities, whether that's um, sexual orientation, gender identity, racial identity. We have lots of ways both administratively 
to support you on your identity journey, but also lots of student organizations to help you find your voice, to have really meaningful peer-to-peer -peer, uh, mentoring relationships, and to help you find your perhaps activist space. Um, we have uh, Division One. We are Division One school, so we have a really rich fan culture with our 20 Division One sports. But we also have over 50 club and intramural um, sport outlets. So you can definitely pursue your sporting interests if you're not necessarily competing at that division one level. As with most large research institutions, we also pride ourselves on all the support services that um, exist to make sure that you are thriving um, on our campus. Um, we uh, have something, oops, sorry. We have something called the CARE Network, which allows students to take care of each other and also to report sort of urgent um, wellness crises to make sure that students are not, are getting cared for by our um, colonial health services. We also have a tremendous network of mental health professionals here to support you, whether it's just joining a support group or getting one-to-one -one counseling. Um, we also have an amazing career services office that doesn't just offer sort of students who are looking for a job after graduation. They have a four-year curriculum that helps students um, do a good inventory of their own skills. They learn how to write a resume and a convincing cover letter. They learn how to interview. They um, avail themselves of our handshake program, which um, again, teaches them how to navigate that interview space um, and allows them access to our database of over 15,000 um, internship opportunities. Um, most students at GW are very kinetic and very engaged in their world. And you'll find that our students usually do between one and three internships a year, whether concurrent with uh, some academic semester or during a summer. Um, and our career services um, center is set up to help you find those internship opportunities or a wage paying job or a, a work study job while you're here on campus. Um, if you have a documented disability or disability student support services is here to help you um, learn how to advocate for yourself and get all of the accommodations that will help you thrive at GW. The store is um, one of my favorite support networks. It's our way to make sure that we are um, combating food insecurity in a way that allows all of our students to be successful. So if our students with their declining debit balance card find that they are running low on funds for food at the end of the semester, we make sure that we can provide them with non-perishable groceries, with prepared meals, with toiletries, with anything they need. And this is available to any student that signs up for the service. So we make sure that all students are set up to, um, to really thrive and have a safety net when they're still learning how to budget on campus. Our multicultural Student Services Center sponsors the best party on campus, although I'm sure Adina and Sarah will have some other great suggestions too. Um, the, the, um, the block party happens at the, in the first year of, of, of the school year, first week of the school year. And it's really a sort of a multicultural street fair um, and faculty members and students come out. Um, we do uh, dancing and celebrate ethnic foods. And we just have a really, really good time celebrating diversity at GW. So when you apply to our school, you don't apply generally to the institution, but you apply to one of our seven schools and programs. The Colombian College of Arts and Sciences is out of our mini liberal arts college within our research university, and it has disciplines as diverse as creative writing and astrophysics. So if you're interested in one of the traditional liberal arts majors, you'll generally find that your interests lie in the Colombian College. The remaining six are a little more career focused. For example, Corcoran School is for visual artists and performing artists as well. Um, our School of Media and Public Affairs is our journalism school. Our Elliott School for International Affairs is situated literally across the street from the State Department. So it really is truly an incredibly well-placed uh, place to take advantage of those State Department um, expertise and relationships. The Milken Institute School of Public Health obviously has seen a surge in interest this year because one of the things that we offer is epidemiology studies. So our students that are gravitate to these programs are interested in a public health approach to pre-medical preparation. We also have pre-physical therapy programs in exercise science and in nutrition science. Our School of Engineering and Applied Science has traditional um, 
mechanical engineering, civil engineering, but also um, I think 17 different kinds of concentrations of computer science. So there's um, we're expanding our programs in the um, School of Engineering all the time. Um, and our School of Business has traditional business majors like marketing and um, accounting and um, finance, but we also do um, some great um, new, more creative majors like innovation and entrepreneurship. We have a great um, sports and hospitality uh, major for students who are interested in that area. So we really do offer um, some great opportunities. Also, when you apply to these programs, you're not locked in. So you can cross register in programs where you're um, in, in other schools that are outside your major. You can double major across schools and you can transfer easily between schools if you find that your initial landing place is not serving your future goals as well as you would like. This slide, I'm not gonna go through, it's very text heavy, but it shows you the candy store that GW really is in terms of the academic offerings that we do offer. Um, and again, just to reinforce the, the flexibility of designing coursework that really meets your needs. And we know that you have more than one interest when you come to college. And we know that there's lots of disciplines that aren't offered at the high school level. We want you to experiment. We want you to learn more about yourself as an academic being. So I talked about those living learning programs. We have um, Mount Vernon Campus Scholars, which are small communities of about 30 students. Um, Civic House being our, one of our more popular ones. Um, students who are interested in potentially managing a nonprofit institution after graduation find people who are of like mind and similar passions in this living learning program. Our politics and values program also is for students to have an intersectionality of interest in history and politics and philosophy. Um, the women's leadership program is great for um, first year women who want mentors in the field in the areas of interest. They'll do field trips together. They'll be assigned um, other women who are practicing in the field who might have advice on internships or potential career plans. Our honors program is actually a four year program um, that students can sign up for about a three fifths of your program of your coursework will bear an honors imprimatur and you will do a capstone program um, to complete your fourth year of study. The BAMD program I skipped over, that's actually a condensed seven year program where you do three years of undergraduate studies and then four years of medical school. And if you meet certain academic benchmarks in your three undergraduate years, then your admission to GW Medical School is automatic. So if you have any interest in any of these programs, I'm happy to work through that with you. Um, STEM at GW, this slide is just to remind me that we offer um, lots of great STEM majors, but we also make a pledge to you to graduate tech savvy students, no matter your subject area. So we want to make sure that you can use or maybe even build a simple app that will um, allow you to be effective in your new workplace or manage a database. And arts at GW are not just for majors. We have orchestras and jazz bands and multiple theater groups and acapella groups. So you don't necessarily have to major in your area of cultural interest to, to foster that passion. So finally, GW is a, um, a common app institution. We are a holistic evaluation institution, which means that we don't have any GPA cutoffs or any basic um, SAT requirements. We are a test optional institution and have been since 2015. Um, and we'll pledge to continue to do so indefinitely. So that means that we're looking at the whole of you. You can choose to submit test scores or not submit test scores. Um, we want you to be able to be in the driver's seat about representing yourself best to us. That transcript is still gonna be the most important piece of information in your application file. We wanna see that you've taken rigorous courses and done well in them, um, especially playing to your strengths in the fields that you want to study in college. So if AP, if you're a math guy or, or or girl or lady, and you really want to pursue advanced math or economics or something like that, we want to see that you've tested yourself and really um, the more advanced math classes that are offered to you in high school. Um, we are, uh, we have two early decision cycles, one regular decision cycle. So um, early decision obviously is for students who are, are really committed to coming here, but of course you make that promise knowing that you will come here regardless of your financial aid package. So make sure you're having those intentional conversations with your family, with your counselor. Um, no matter your admit cycle that you um, end up entering, 
you were eligible for both merit aid and financial and need-based financial aid. And there is no additional application that you have to fill out to be eligible for merit aid. The students that are academically qualified for merit aid can be awarded amounts from $5,000 a year to $30,000 a year. Um, so we definitely are excited about offering those and those can um, be offered up to 10 semesters. So if you switch majors or need an extra semester or two to finish, that merit aid will follow you through your undergraduate career. Um, for our financial aid students who feel they may be eligible for need-based aid, we require both the FAFSA and the CSS profile. Um, I want to stop there because I'm sure you have questions. Um, and if I haven't answered those questions, I want to make sure that I answer them. And I know Adina and Sarah have some other um, information that they want to share. So I'll take your questions and then we'll move on to our other presenters. If you're shy, I can toss out a few. I wanted to keep, keep it brief, but we also have very robust study abroad programs. Um, about 40% of our students do at least one semester abroad. Um, and we have something called a global bachelor's program, which allows you to study for two semesters and a summer in three different countries. So we really, really value um, raising global citizens. Um, and we wanna make sure that anyone that wants to study abroad can. So much of our financial aid package is extendable to your study abroad opportunity. And many of our students do find that that study abroad program is not much more expensive than um, a semester in Foggy Bottom. So um, we definitely encourage you to investigate those opportunities if GW is of interest to you. Oh, and I promised at last my, if there's no questions, my only at GW moment, and all of us have one, um, is I was going up the elevator in the Marvin Center where my office is, um, just bringing my lunch back to my desk and the elevator opens and out come eight Secret Service members and Hillary Clinton. Um, just sort of said hi and moved on to her next speaking gig. So the real beauty of GW being in the thick of things is that, um, Obviously, world figures come to speak to our students. They We host um, amazing debates with public figures on our campus. We have our faculty have sort of world leaders who are, you know, Facebook friends and they come and talk to their class. So we have a very, very well integrated into the world faculty um, that really want to make sure that our students are citizens of the world before they graduate. So that's my only HEW moment. Um, I guess I could say mine. Um, so my only at GW moment was actually my first weekend of freshman year um, with Hillel. And we, um, I was a part of the early move-in launchpad program, which I'm sure Adina um, will talk about, but I can also talk about it. Um, uh, my first, you know, that was my first introduction to GW. And part of that program was we went to the Supreme Court uh, and saw Ruth Bader Ginsburg speak. Um, and she's my personal hero or yeah, icon. Um, and she really inspired me to kind of pursue my uh, law degree, which now I'm taking, you know, I'm studying for the LSAT and taking it in August. So there we go. <laughs> Amazing. That's a good segue from Chris to me because, uh, RBG, we, we, we're grateful that we were able to take two groups of students to take her to visit with her over the years. And um, a moment like that is the epitome of what we're trying to accomplish at GW Hillel and why, you know, when someone says, well, what makes GW Hillel different than any other Hillel? That's it, right? We want to talk about um, the moment that you're living in, right? You're here in DC. A lot of our students are politically inclined. They're thinking about the world they're living in. And then we want to say, well, what do Jewish values have to say about that, right? So we don't just sit with RBG and hear about the law. She shared, for example, how for her being Jewish and reading through texts and arguments and questioning is very much intricately tied to the process of being a Supreme Court justice. So it was it was the epitome. It's the exact moment that we try to pursue uh, in our work at GW. Hello. So um, I'm going to share my screen. And I also will say that um, I'm a very informal person. And Sarah is absolutely here to uh, chat as well. So don't be shy. Uh, feel free to jump on in if you have questions specifically. So um, here's another iconic DC moment, right? The cherry blossoms. Like I said, we're meeting the moment and I'm not going on to my, what am I looking for here? Who has my magic ready view? Here we go. Okay. Um, 
an iconic DC moment, like I said, and we're always thinking critically about how we meet life in DC and then add Jewish values to bear. So and um, we're gonna move on here because Chris was an excellent, uh, excellent tour guide for us. Um, this epitomizes what I just said, right? This is the core of what we're trying to accomplish at GW Hillel, whether it's, you know, I want you to think about your Jewish values when you're scrolling through your Instagram feed. I want you to think about your Jewish values when you go out for your latest internship, right? I really, I, I don't believe that the Hillel should be a place where you come and be in your Jewish bubble and then leave again. It's more of how can we help you bring your Jewish values and, and your Jewish identity very strongly into any environment that you encounter to the rest of your life. So to me, that's that's the sign of success that we we on some level work ourselves out of the equation. If a student were ever to graduate from GW and say, oh, I don't have Shabbat dinner to go to anymore to Hillel, I guess I'm not doing Shabbat. I have failed miserably, right? I wanna give you the tools you need to do good things in the world and be a proud Jew. Um, I want to share briefly uh, a short snippet of a video. I won't show the whole thing, but um, in that vein, I, I want to share a brief story which epitomizes a lot of what's happening with us right now in GW. So I asked a student who just graduated, his name's Noah. I asked him and Zach, who is another student that just graduated, can you like think of a song for us? Because we're, we're trying to open this new building. Can you like dream up a song that might be, um, I don't know, talk about community, talk about home. Like, what do you think? So this is what, um, I won't share the whole story, but this is a little snippet of that video. The rich tradition of GW Hillel is really enmeshed with the city that we're living in. The GW Hillel building will not only be a space for community and connection for our students, but will also be something that will be used in the heart of downtown Washington, DC by the Jewish community at large. This new space is just going to open up opportunities for students to practice Judaism in their own way. For me, GW Hillel is another like aspect of my Jewish identity. I'm a fool when you build it now. Feel like I've been running since I hit the ground. And before I wasn't really living in the now. Just a little bit me to go and kill the doubt. Someone's there, whatever the need. My chest gets tense and it's difficult breathing. I'm not alone in these fields. The strong foundation supports what I'm building. Hey, and I don't know what I'd be without it. Vision cloudy, mind overcrowded. Feet on the earth, not grounded. Used to feel lost in the crowd. In the studio, lost in the sound. Lift me up when I'm feeling down. You build me up while I'm building out. Hey. At the heart of all Jewish values is learning, tradition, community. The presence of Hillel has added to my college experience at GW. There's a lot to it than just a Shabbat dinner or a Jewish event. It's really a support system. We're all okay, so there's a, a little glimpse. Um, why do I share that story and, and that little snippet? Because A, obviously it's it's them, they're talented musicians, right? And they, here, I'm going to exit full screen for a second. There we go. Um, it's it's the epitome of what, right? They're bringing Jewish values into their music, which is a beautiful thing, A. B, I think it speaks to the fact that yes, GW Hillel is about Shabbat dinner and yes, it's about Rosh Hashanah and all of those needs for you will be met while you're, while you're in, in college. But it's also about really like, I want to honor your skill set. I want to figure out who you are. I want to figure out what's important to you. And then I want to figure out how can we support you in your growth as you carry on with your college career. I, I want you to think differently about your Jewish identity and who you are as a person from the first day of your freshman year until the last day of your senior year. And, and Noah and Zach and Sarah, you might've seen she was a little, uh, guest star in that video are epitomes of that. So big picture, what is happening at GW with Jewish life? Um, number one, uh, we have about 3,000-ish Jewish undergrads. I say ish because that number is kind of always a moving target and, and um, demographics are tricky in this day and age, but we have about 3,000 Jewish undergrads and about 1,500 Jewish graduate students, um, all making up a large, vibrant Jewish community on campus. Uh, we are so excited, as was mentioned in that video, that we are opening a new home that has been, you know, I've been at GW as the executive director for 11 years. It was in process to build this new facility before I even began. So we have been on this crazy long journey and here we are ready to open our doors for the fall semester. The building is done. It is beautiful. It is a bright and joyful space. 
Um, and I share that for you, A, because if you come to GW, you're going to have a beautiful home to utilize. But B, because I think that this community, we've been in a really great place and, and I'm proud of the work that we've done. And we're also kind of getting ready to take off like a rocket ship, right? Like big, new, exciting things are happening. Um, among them, I will say is that there's going to be a, a lot of uh, people sometimes are hesitant to go to GW from a kosher food standpoint, if that's an important priority in your household. Um, we'll now have an in-house kosher caterer at GW Hillel, where you'll be able to go in, you'll be able to swipe your G World card, get your breakfast, lunch, and dinner, a great place to build community and a great place to, to get your, uh, your bellies nourished as you go through college life. Um, key focuses for us for the past year, just to kind of get a glimpse of where our thinking is and what we've been encountering during COVID. Um, our core focuses have been around education. So we say Torah, Avodah, V'gemil, and Hasadim. Education, right? We have done a ton of small cohort learning, thinking about identity building, who you are. Um, Sarah, do you maybe want to speak a little bit about the cohort that you were intimately involved with? Yeah, definitely. Um, so I actually led a cohort um, of students uh, during this virtual environment. I recruited for it with um, our social, ju social justice fellow, Marley Goodman, who's incredible. Um, and the topic was um, like the myth of the monolith, which um, kind of encapsulates a lot of a lot of things that I was thinking about in terms of identity and how I fit into the Jewish community um, because I'm like a Mizrahi, Israeli, American, Ashkenazi Jew. So it's like a big, you know, conglomeration of a lot of different things. And so um, I know a lot of people's Jewish identities transform a lot in college and also like their understandings of themselves and how they fit into the Jewish community um, changes. So um, it was really meaningful. We did a cooking class of, you know, like um, Jewish foods from the diaspora. We talked about, um, you know, all the different, like not all of them, there's only six sessions, but like sub communities uh, within the Jewish community and, you know, what it means to be an ethno religion. So like um, the ethnic piece of being Jewish, um, which tends to get sidelined, especially in America. And um, I think, you know, Marley and I are talking about doing it next semester and the semester after um, before I graduate. So um, it was really incredible. And I think it kind of that cohort alone for me encapsulates my journey uh, with the Jewish community at GW and, and how incredible it is because this was kind of an idea that I had um, as a engagement intern. And it was kind of, I threw it out there and then it became a reality within a few weeks. Um, so that just shows like how incredible and how open and welcoming um, Hillel is in particular at GW, but also the Jewish community at GW is as a whole and the university. Um, so for me, it was one of the most meaningful things that I've done. And I think it's just been an incredible journey for me, especially during COVID to have this community of people that I can rely on and really get me and like, let me do what I need to do um, to feel like welcome and comfortable and also create spaces for people who feel similarly. Um, and yeah, I just think it's a really beautiful place to be. I've learned so much about myself uh, because of it. And I think I'm definitely, you know, going into my senior year feeling empowered to, um, you know, make a difference and uh, continue my own journey with Judaism and like, you know, my major and the GW community and all those things. Amazing, amazing. So that's a little glimpse of education, professional development, Avoda, so we say work, right? We understand when you come to GW, and I'm sure Chris would have something to say about this too, many of our students are very future focused, right? They're, they're here in Washington because they want to jump into their careers, they want to build their resumes for better or worse, right? We want to help you kind of slow down sometimes and say it's okay, you have time to build your career later. And also we want to say like, we want to help you. Again, what do Jewish values have to say about how you go out and build your professional life? So we do a lot of mentorship work. We created a summer internship program last summer in light of the fact that many internships were canceled because of COVID, right? So we're always thinking critically about how to utilize our rich network in support of our students. Um, and last, Gimme uh, Hasadim. so we're going to loosely translate it here. Um, a lot of work around justice issues, right? What's happening in the headlines and what do we need to kind of be engaged with as a community? How do we need to think critically about our role as global citizens and as, as members of the Jewish community? Um, and wellness, right? Like we're thinking critically about mental health right now. We know it was an isolating and challenging and difficult year. And we wanna make sure students feel really seen and understood and, and know that they have a place to go to when they're trying to build a network when maybe it was hard to do during COVID. Um, reiterating again, we're, we're tool givers. I wanna make sure you know how to create your own. If, if you order a pizza and a bottle of wine and you have friends over and you create a holy space, that is Shabbat. And that is a beautiful thing, just as much as you know, chicken and roast potatoes at a, a more formal environment. 
Um, looking ahead, what are we thinking about for the year to come? So we're opening this new space. We wanna do it in a joyful, beautiful, open, warm way. Make sure that our culture is really, what's fascinating is because so many people have been off campus for so long, there's no like the way it always is, right? We have a beautiful opportunity to kind of hold on to what we love and also reinvent what maybe needed a little bit of tweaking. So we're excited to focus on that, whether that's thinking about Shabbat as a joyful space and a break from the craziness of the week. Um, we wanna make sure people you know, find their people, so to speak. We know that at the end of the day, uh, our best um, check mark for Hillel is a student who graduates and says, I met my best friend at Hillel, or I found a partner in this world at Hillel, or I, I felt really seen at Hillel, right? That's a core deliverable for us. Forget about all the fancy programs. We know that's really important. Um, and I also will just, you know, Sarah beautifully articulated um, what was important, but I don't know if Sarah, you want to add anything that I missed in terms of, of what you think makes GW, let's say Jewish life a little unique or different or meaningful to you in light of other opportunities you had to go to other places for college. Definitely. Um, so I think for me, going to a school that had a significant Jewish population was really important to me um, in my college search, just because, um, you know, I'm from Memphis, Tennessee. There weren't that many Jews where I was growing up, but also like I had a really solid uh, Jewish community that I was a part of. And it was a huge part of like who I am. And I think coming to GW, um, like I felt the same way I felt about my small Jewish community there that I do about here. And I think like I met Adina at the organization fair, um, like my first, I think it was during orientation. And I just like had this like feeling that I was, I just felt so comfortable and um, supported already, even though I, we, I just met her. Um, and I think that's a feeling that a lot of other um, Jewish students, you know, have at GW. I think it's a really unique place because um, you can really kind of curate your own um, the, your own way that you want to go about your Jewish identity in terms of like, if you want to go to Shabbat every week, if you want to participate in like specific cohorts, like education cohorts, um, or if you want to go to specific events or you want to, I mean, there's just, there's so many options for you. And I think that's a really incredible thing that most schools, uh, don't have available to Jewish students. And also I think um, what's great about it as well is that like you meet Jewish people. Like, so one of my best friends, I met her at orientation um, and then she ended up, you know, getting really involved with Hillel in particular and then uh, becoming a student leader. And now I'm uh, the co-director of student experience at Hillel um, as a student leader, which is what she did before, but we met outside of it. Like you meet so many Jewish students just through your major, just through, um, you know, what you're doing outside of it or in your internships. I did an internship at the Anti-Defamation League my um, sophomore year, which was incredible. Um, and, you know, being around other Jewish, mainly Jewish professionals working on issues that are really important to me that I couldn't do really anywhere else. Um, so I think it's a really beautiful community that is very welcoming and also you can find like Jewish people who are also interested in things that you're interested in that are like niche or um and there's so many opportunities to kind of develop your sense of self and your connection to your Jewish community here and at home awesome I'm not coming next time Sarah's just running the session Jacob you're the lone soldier here do you have any questions can we be helpful Um, yeah, I, I do actually have a question. When you said that there's a student living, are you, do you get to pick which campus you get to go to first, or are you kind of assigned to like go to Mount Vernon campus for two years and then you could pick or vice versa? So great question. So, um, we have a three-year residency requirement and this is something that arrangement we have with the city so we require our first years sophomores and juniors to live on campus the mount vernon campus is a primarily first year campus so a third of our first year class will be living on the mount vernon campus so when our first years commit to coming, they receive a housing um, questionnaire and they fill out, I think there's like 14 spaces and they can fill out which residence halls they prioritize in order of the ones they want. Um, and there's configurations too, like I would like to be in this residence hall in a double or I'd like to be this in this okay. residence hall in a single. So while we don't guarantee that you'll get your first choice, 
we really do try to match students with the residence hall experience that they seem to be most eager for. Um, okay. Students can choose their roommates as well. So if you're coming with other high school friends or if you meet someone, you know, through a Halal face group. In fact, I work with Adina right now with a student with a very strong Jewish identity who is really keen on finding a roommate that shared his values. You know, you can find those folks in time to do a sign up, but um, the the Mount Vernon campus is, is essentially a first year campus. So okay. um, most second and third year students, unless they're resident staff or something, you know, doing some sort of job in the residence halls of Mount Vernon, will move to Foggy Bottom. Okay, thank you. And this is a bit of a much more specific question, but do you know if GW has a fencing club? They do? Okay. I raised fencers, and so okay. yes, they do have a fencing club. It's not a varsity sport, but it is a club. Okay, thank you. Sure. Our which weapon are you? Uh, epe. Epe. I have three epes, epe fencers, which is so much fun. It is really fun, yes. <laughs> um, Jacob, I'm going to throw my email address in the chat. So if you have any other questions along the way, or we can connect you with other students, by all means, be in touch. I'm going to put mine as well. And obviously, if you have any questions that you want to ask a student about anything, not obviously not just Jewish life, um, I'm also a GW, GW student. I'm also a um, peer advisor for the Elliott School. So like if you have questions about, yeah, like I don't know what you're um, considering for your major, but if you have any questions about Elliott or Jewish life or anything about GW, I'm happy to you know answer them. Okay, thank you. All right, thank you. Awesome, thank you guys so much for sharing that. Um, man, what, what were the odds with that fencing thing? <laughs> <laughs> um, but that that's really fantastic. Um, thanks Jacob for, for joining us. I know we had some other people pop in and out, but also we are recording this. So um, people will be able to take advantage of this amazing information about GW um, for, for weeks and months to come. Um, so I really just wanna thank you for coming. I wanna thank Adina and Chris and Sarah. Um, for, for joining and for sharing about GW. Um, this was all so much great information and um, I know it will be really useful to a lot of people. Uh, like I said, the, the virtual college road trip is gonna be going all month of June. So um, visit roadtriptocollege.org if you wanna sign up for some other schools or check out the upcoming workshops. Um, but we're really excited to provide this uh, resource for, for the community and for teens searching for the right school for them. Uh, so thanks for spending your evening with us. Um, and we hope everyone has a great night. Thank you. Bye. It's nice yeah. meeting you guys. Bye. Nice to meet everyone.